So today I thought I'd put together just four quick little PowerPoint tips for everybody. And these are kind of in the did you know category. And these are kind of speed tricks, a couple hacks, and like I say, a couple new features. So let's kind of get started with this. And the first one is how to change the default shape and text in PowerPoint. Here's kind of the scoop. Here I just have a blank presentation. And I'm going to go ahead and insert a shape. I'm just going to insert me a rectangle shape. Okay. So in a blank presentation, in other words, one that doesn't use a theme, how many times have you seen this? This blue box with this blue outline on it. And in conjunction with that, how many times has that not been what you wanted? ever for any of the other shapes and stuff you may be creating in your PowerPoint slide deck. So every time you add a shape you have to go in and you have to maybe take the outline off. This is my favorite. I always have to take the outline off. And then maybe you know if I'm using standard colors oh, then I have to go in and change like the fill. Okay. Well what you can do is you can insert a shape into your PowerPoint project and format it the way you want. This one I took off the outline and I changed the shape fill color. I'm going to want to use this a bunch so what you can do that not a lot of people know is I'm going to right click on this guy and I'm going to set as default shape. Okay. So now the parameters, the options that I selected there are going to be remembered and if I go and insert another shape, notice I didn't have to remove the outline and change the fill color. Also if I go in and insert another shape, like a triangle, it also has those same default parameters. That's kind of handy to know if you are working in a project and you want to have some kind of consistency with quickly and easily adding formatting to shapes. The same thing actually works if you insert a text box. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm going to insert a text box and type in some text. And of course by default PowerPoint loves it some Calibri and a certain size, so I'm going to go ahead and again, the, the key here is just to kind of format it the way I want to be consistent throughout this slide deck. So uh, I'm not going to use Calibri, I'm going to use, oh, I don't know, maybe Bebus as the font that I want to use. And the same trick holds true, once you get your formatting the way you want, and I can also change the color so let's uh, change that to a blue. Right click on this guy and say set as default text box. Now anytime I insert a new text box and start typing, I get the proper formatting. Right? So this is kind of a big time saver. The big caveat here is that this only works in the slide deck that you're working with. If I opened up a new slide deck, all this goes back to the original defaults or the defaults that are for the, the settings in the default PowerPoint presentation. The way you can kind of get around that is I could go ahead and save this as a theme and that would then retain all of the formatting and stuff or I could also save this as a template. So let's browse and you could just save it as a PowerPoint template and then when you open it up it's going to remember the settings and stuff. Okay so if I want to save it as a theme you just go to the design tab and then save current theme. We'll just call it test. And now if I do a new presentation, here I go to custom. Here's my test theme. 
So in a new presentation, I could select this and insert a shape. Okay, and I have my formatting. So that's useful if you're making multiple slide presentations uh, and you don't want to have to go through that rigmarole all again. <laughs> right? So, yeah, that's a good tip. Cool tip, cool tip. Not a lot of people know about that guy. The next one, double-click format painters. Uh, I like this one. This is another one that I use quite a bit that I don't think I've really talked to people about much. And let me see if I can rack up a little bit of a demo for us. I'm just going to make a few different copies of this. Okay, so let's say on this particular shape, I go ahead and make some changes. Let's change the fill. And what I'd like to do is to make these other two boxes the same, the same formatting. If we go to the Home tab, of course what we can do is use the Format Painter, okay, select the object you want to copy the properties from, hit the Format Painter and then click and it's going to paint these properties onto this second object. Well, at this point I really want to do it to the third object too, but what you have to do normally is go back to the Format Painter and paint it again. Well, here's a little trick that I'll show you. You click on your first one after making your changes and if you double click the Format Painter, watch what happens. Yes, I can Format Paint this one, but oh, I still have my little brush tool and you can just paint your little guts out. And this works across slides. Anywhere you want to continue Format Painting, you can do it if you just initiate it by double clicking the format painting tool and then the way you get out of that is you just press escape otherwise you'll be format painting everything everywhere <laughs> so that's kind of a handy dandy thing let's try one other thing let's add an animation to this guy uh, let's just uh, I'll just have him fly in so he's flying in well, I want the other ones to fly in too I click on the one that's configured the way I want. And of course, we go to the Animations tab. Yeah, this thing called the Animation Painter. Well, the same holds true if I click it once and I can then paint it to a particular object, but now it's gone. Okay, so let's undo that. This time, let's double click the Animation Painter and paint and animate. Boom, 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 boom. Right? So that's nice. That's handy dandy. Yeah, I like it. New transparency button for images. Let's demo this guy real quick. I'll go to a blank slide and let's insert us a picture. Pictures, widescreen, widescreens, and we'll insert a picture of who else? Maggie the Wonder Dog. Now, in previous builds of PowerPoint, it was not possible. And in previous versions, I'm running 2016 from the Office 365 suite. In previous versions, it was not possible to make this image transparent. As stupid and brain dead as that is, before, if you went to Format Picture, you could not, in any way, shape, or form, make this thing transparent. The only workaround was to create a shape and add this picture as a fill to the shape and then you could change the transparency. What a pain in the <coughs> butt, right? Well now, this is fairly new. Microsoft has apparently come out of its coma and this is a regular image. So if I click on it, go to the Format tab, you'll notice that now there is this little dealy right here called transparency. And you can set the transparency of the image. Let's change the background color on this to make it a little more dramatic. I'll just change it to like a dark gray. So 
on the Format tab, you can change the transparency. And you'll notice that the darkness of the black is kind of showing through. Boom! That was kind of a big one, and one that I was really kind of happy to see. So I like that quite a bit. That's a fun little tip. And then finally, Quat for quick access. As video creators, especially if you work with things like templates, what you'll find is you're using tools. Uh, and actually, we could even use the Format Painter as a good example. If using the Format Painter is something I want to do a lot, then anything that I want to do a lot, I add to my Quick Access toolbar up here. So let's say that the Animation Painter is a tool that I want to use a lot. Instead of always having to go to the Home tab and then selecting the tool here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find it once. I'm going to right click and add to Quick Access Toolbar. So now, no matter what tab I'm on, I can just go up here and if you hover over, you'll see, oh, there it is, Format Painter. Click it. Paint it. Right? Now, this is kind of handy, especially for features or functions that you can get to from multiple places. One of my favorite examples of that is something called the Selection Pane. So, on the Home tab, I can go over here to Select and then down here to Selection Pane, and that's going to open up the Selection Pane, which of course has all the layers on my slide. Again, this is critical when you're working with some more advanced templates. Okay, so I can do that, or you can click on any object, you can go to the Format tab, and oh, there's the Selection Pane, and I think there's even one other way to get to it, but it eludes me at the moment. And here's the punchline again. Once you find it, no matter where it is, just right click on it and add it to your Quick Access Toolbar. Okay, so now again, no matter what tab I'm on, I need to get to the selection pane. I just go up here and go boom, and you click again to turn it off. Selection pane? No selection pane. I did not have to go to Home, Select, Selection Pane. I did not have to click on an object, go to Format, Selection Pane. Okay, so things like that, especially for tools and, and more advanced slides, when you find stuff that you end up wanting to use a lot, put it on the Quick Access Toolbar. So just a couple that I have here. One is a screen clipping. If we jump back to, well, let's just go here to the Facebook group. Let's say in my presentation, I'd really like a screenshot of this. Okay, and I use this one constantly. Uh, so let's do a new slide. I make sure my window is open. In other words, this is the last window that I have open. Go to PowerPoint and hit the screen clipping. Now, you can get to it a number of ways. You can insert screenshot screen clipping, but this way, let's just click it. It jumps to the last open window. Boom! I got me some graphical content that I can then, of course, you know, do any of the nice effects I might want to do. And there you have that. Okay, so I, I like screen clipping, uh, inserting pictures. I have the Format Painter, the Selection Pane, and the Animation Pane, Animation Painter, and Shapes. These are ones that I use most often. So, again, to insert shapes, instead of going Insert Shapes, if you click here, they're all just right there. Handy dandy. So modifying your quick access toolbar is just kind of a sweet and awesome deal. Alright? Alright everybody, 
unless there's any other questions and I'm not seeing any, I will let you all go. Thanks for coming and we'll see you next time. Take it easy, everybody.